Okay, so I'm live and I uh, have a, one set up here. I thought I was gonna be able to do this little quick Bible study with you without being disturbed. It looks like that's not the case. The other two are down in the basement, so they'll probably be popping their way up in just a minute. All right, so yesterday, um, my big call out was to people that aren't going to church and how I told them how I feel like it's truly we are at a time and um, an age where you are going to be addicted to something because the world is offering so many things and, and ultimately God created us with holes designed only to need him holes that could not be filled with the worldly things. And I did not realize that until I did a Bible study or earlier this year. And I did not know that we were created with holes designed only to be filled by God. So as I'm back at the middle school, I begin to see all these kids searching for things of this world because they are designed just like you and me to need something to fill their lives up with. And um, of course, at our age, <laughs> we've either fallen into those holes, uh, into the worldly holes, and then become addicted to them, or by the grace of God, haven't become addicted yet and opened our eyes up and, you know, maybe found Christ along the way. I don't know what your story is, and, and that's just something everybody has a story. But anyway, um, today I'm coming at the people that, um, when I did the video yesterday, we're probably sitting back and going, hmm, yeah, people need to get into church. Oh, yeah, they do. This world's really, really bad, and there's so many bad people out there. So tonight I'm coming after you guys because people that judge and ultimately Christians that judge, in my eyes, are worse than the person that is drug addicted. I'll say that one more time. The people out there in our world today, and I'm gonna add on to that, the Christians in our world today that are looking down on everyone else because of their sins and because of their addictions and because of their um, identity with you know their relationships or you to me are worse than the drug addict or the person that um, I, 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 I just I, I'm, I'm so passionate about this issue because every day at school I guess I see so many kids that are so turned off by basically God because when they hear God they feel judgment automatically so those of you out there, you know, the, the, the great thing about knowing my God and becoming closer with my God is I've realized that I don't care if people judge me anymore. <laughs> Guess what? It took a demotion. It took the whole world. It took the whole community. And, me, and, and, and thank God the whole community didn't ever find anything. But it, it, it made me think of other people that thought, oh, gosh, what do they think that I've done, you know, like to be demoted from my job as a principal? You know, like that bothered me. It bothered me. It would bother anyone for, for, for them to think I did something to deserve it. But guess what? It took all of that to realize that the stronger and the closer that I get with Christ, I don't care what people think about me. Because there's, there's the other two. Great. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Okay. Sorry. Because guess what? The closer I get to Christ... <laughs> <laughs> and the more addicted I get to Jesus, the more the world doesn't matter. So, because I know that when I spend time with him daily and I'm listening to him and I'm, I'm digging into his word, and as long as I am loving every single person that I come into contact with, I don't care what you say about me. I don't care if you say I'm crazy. I don't care if you say, uh, man, she doesn't have a right to um, even be a teacher don't care at this point because all I care about is how much I love Christ and my relationship with him and that's where my focus is going to be on um I have a scripture to go along with that and that is um Matthew 7 and it says do not judge others 
Do not judge others and you will not be judged. So praise God. When I go and I think about somebody and I'm looking at them, I'm like, man. I immediately in my mind think that we live in a broken world and that could have easily been me. But thank God that I had a mother and a father. Yes, he was an alcoholic and a great grandmother though that raised me in the church. Because if they hadn't, then my life would have led a different path and my children would have led that path later. But at some point, I tell my middle school kids, at what point are, are you gonna be the one to stop this to continue in your family, in this lineage, or are you going to continue this destructive path? You have a choice, we all have a choice. So the rest of it is, for you will be treated as you treat others. The standard you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged. So if you're all righteous and you're judging every single person that you see, it says in the Bible, and I believe every single word in the Bible, and if you don't, then you shouldn't really be listening to me because I'm getting everything from here. It says the standard you use in judging is the same standard by which you will be judged. So the next time you see someone on the street and they're homeless and you go, man, they should get a job. They, they, you know, they're just worthless. They're no good. I want you to begin to think that that is how God will be judging you at some point. He will look at you as worthless. And if, and if you think that you're perfect and you don't think, um, and, and cause you go to church, there's a problem there. None of us are worthy. None of us are worthy. None of us are worthy to call God our King and our father. And so the very first moment when you feel worthy enough, you've got a problem. And that's when we begin to judge others. So I challenge you, man, if you think exa you're exactly where you need to be and you're per just perfect the way that you are, I would get down on my knees and I would ask God to reveal what I need to do next. Because no one, there was only one perfect sinless man and that was Jesus Christ himself. And none of us are perfect. Let me continue going. And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? A lot of people out there, a lot of middle school kids, well, they're doing this and they're doing this and they're... And I tell them, you know, we always use the rule when you're pointing at somebody, how many fingers are pointing back at you? I learned that from Ms. Jennings, my um, language arts teacher in middle school. And it's so true, but the Bible talks about it as why look at the speck, basically a splinter in somebody else's eye when you have a whole log in your own. How can you think of saying to your friend, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own eye? Hypocrite. First, get rid of the log in your own eye. Then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. Don't waste what is holy on people who are unholy. Don't throw your pearls to pigs. They will trample the pearls, then turn, and attack you. So, yeah, I see Carol Pierce says you're right, and you're not even supposed to whisper about your neighbor. I know, and how many times, you know, that, that people put each other down, and I'm talking about in the church, and, and heck, that's why a lot of people don't want to go to church. And, and that is where the devil's getting all of us. He wants us to stay out of the churches, because there are people. We're human, and, 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 and we all make mistakes. But now I'm, I'm talking today to the people that are in the church body. And I am asking and I am sincerely going to be praying. And if you feel like that I'm speaking to you, I don't have one person dead set in my mind right now. That's the Holy Spirit reaching out to you saying, and, and just nudging at your heart saying, do you look at other people and judge? I challenge you to watch the movie The Shack because, man, it just gives you a whole picture of how this world, it all started back in Genesis when Adam and Eve first sinned. We live in an imperfect world. And until we, as parents or as adults or as whenever, whatever stage in our life it's going to be, until we are ready to see others and love others and know that if we don't see another person as Christ would see them, it is a spiritual warfare. And that's attacking you. That spiritual warfare is attacking 
your relationship. You know, if you're feeling like you're in, in, um, almighty and, and better than somebody else, that is the devil. You are no mightier. You are no better than, than any of us. So I challenge you that you just, you get right with God. And I just, I, I wish everyone could begin to see others the way that I see others right now in, in the stage of my life. And I see kids and my heart breaks. I see adults and my heart breaks because, man, it's tough. This world is tough. And we are all one, one just step away from falling. And without the grace of God, every single day in our lives, we would fall and fail and fall and fail miserably. So those of you that are in a church, I challenge you to start looking to others and just loving others and know that it's a spiritual warfare. It's not that person. The devil wants you to believe it's that person, but God loves that person that you hate or that you don't like or that sins and you're judging them just as equal and as much as you. So be the love and the light that this world needs. Because when we judge, man, we are putting down our church, we're putting down Christians and Christ followers, and we are making what we believe a religion where it should just be love that we show every single person in kindness and God will work with their hearts and do what he needs for them. We need to stay out of that part. I love you guys. And um, that was session two of how we're going to create a revolution. Love you. Have a good night.